Erev Tov, Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. I know many of you guys have been following there with, a, with some great interest there, no doubt. Uh, the downing of the Su-24 Russian bomber over uh, Syria there. Uh, of course, Turkey is claiming that the plane had violated its airspace. Uh, they claim that they had warned uh, the pilot uh, up to as many as 10 times over five minutes. That's being reported on Israel National News. Uh, however, the surviving navigator claims that there was uh, no warnings whatsoever given, neither visual nor over radio. And yet uh, it is claimed uh, and, and, and it has been supposedly produced an audio of the, uh, the Turkish pilot of the F-16 giving warnings in English uh, that they were nearing um, Turkish airspace and then according to their rules of engagement after the warnings were not heeded they shot the Russian bomber down. Uh, the United States is standing their ground with NATO, with their ally Turkey, and of course this is making the situation all the more tent. Vladimir Putin has, as many of you guys already know, has said that this is a stab in the back uh, to Russia, especially when they're there fighting ISIS. He also says that uh, Turkey is certainly a, co a collaborator. Uh, with these uh, groups of ISIS there and even now is looking at what is considered the moderate forces against the Syrian uh, uh, Basar al-Assad, the president of Syria, the moderate forces that are backed by the United States uh, now considered to be targets because they were the ones that actually murdered the Russian pilot uh, as he came down in the air. You can see video footage and different videos that have been aired on uh, is on, on uh, YouTube, etc., of this shots being fired at the, at the two, the pilot and the navigator, as they uh, come down out of the skies. Uh, but clearly, it is a majorly tense situation there. Russia has also brought in uh, some of its own uh, SU-400 missiles uh, into the uh, Syria in response. They've also uh, deployed uh, another ship into the region there uh, for a missile cruiser there to deal with any more threats to its own forces there uh, doing the attacks there in Syria. It is very clear that Russia is not there to play games whatsoever. They're, they're very serious about what's going on and very clear that they've made it uh, quite clear that they do believe that this was an intentional provocation. I know there's many people also that believe that the United States, President Barack Obama, has been looking for a re reason to engage in some type of major conflict to divert the failing economy in the United States. And also, we've also seen uh, some reports from Steve Quayle that states that bankers have been given uh, emergency access uh, uh, security measures there to be able to enter into their banks, to be able to take control of these banks during a time of emergency, how to get in, uh, how to be contacted at the last moment notice to go into their banks for an emergency meeting. Uh, a lot of things are going on. And by the way, tomorrow uh, afternoon, we'll be on Hebrew Nation Radio with Bonnie and Ron on their program live. Uh, I believe that is in the morning in the United States. I think that is 9 a.m. Uh, live on Hebrew Nation Radio there. You can follow along there. We'll be looking at these economic issues that are going on. We have our own inside information as well. Uh, things that have not been made public before, at least uh, that I'm aware of like this, uh, that we'll be sharing some things that we have seen and heard of over the years uh, that will bring some interesting light to the economic situation. Also things that have been announced over here on the news in Eastern Europe as well as in Russia uh, that we have monitored about the uh, economic situation that is going on. And we'll be looking at of course, this whole situation with Russia. I'll be studying up deeper on the prophetic side of it, also following the oil trail and the fact that the United States and its allies, NATO, who have been very much involved in buying this illegal oil from ISIS, only fortifying their forces as they could pay for their arms. It's actually a pretty smart idea if you think about it from an from a, uh, economic standpoint that the U.S. would be if the U.S. is going to back 
uh, forces that are opposing the Assad regime, what better way than to make sure they take control of the Syrian oil, then sell it to the United States for discounted prices than the U.S. and other countries such as Europe and uh, their different billionaire oil people can make billions more. And at the same time, um, they get the money that they need to these, uh, these rebel groups here so that they don't have to give them the arms they need. They can make them purchase the arms they need. What people will do for the greed and love of money. It is unbelievable. TASS Russian News has really been reporting a lot of different issues regarding uh, these, these, the situation there in um, in the region there, Syria, uh, as foreign minister says, armed opposition cannot be called a moderate after killing of the Russian pilot, as we mentioned to you earlier. Uh, and this is something that they stated here I'd like to share with you on TASS News today. The armed opposition in Syria cannot be called moderate after killing the Russian pilot. Syrian Foreign Minister Walid Mualim said on Wednesday, answering a question from TASS correspondent, uh, and he says, how can one consider the armed opposition to be moderate if they shot dead the pilot as he uh, parachuted to the ground? This was a crime, he said. Uh, an F-16 fighter of the Turkish Air Force down on Tuesday's Russia's uh, Su-24 young bomber um, over the territory of Syria, the Su-24, the Su-24M crew managed to eject, but one of the two pilots was killed by fire from the ground, the search of the second uh, continued. The second pilot was uh, has been rescued. Two MI-8 helicopters were engaged in the pilot's search and rescue operation. One of the helicopters came under fire and made an emergency landing. One Russian contract serviceman, a Marine, was killed. The rest of the servicemen on board the helicopter were safely evacuated. The downed MI-8 helicopter was later destroyed by mortar fire from the territory controlled by the militants. Again, these are the, um, this is not the ISIS forces, this is actually the U.S. backed uh, people there. And of course, Turkey supports them, they, uh, the U.S. supports them. You just cannot help but wonder who's authorizing this engagement against Russia. Is Russia being pushed? to get in, involved in a major war. Now on top of it, today, 18 Turkish fighter jets patrolled the border with Syria. That was according to Turkey's general staff. Uh, you can see their, their planes lined up on the screen here. Uh, but anyway, it says here that um, the Turkish general staff has conducted one of the largest airspace control missions near the border with Syria, simultaneously engaging uh, the F-18 uh, of the F-16 fighter jets and the general staff in a statement released on Wednesday. And by the way, speaking of these F-16s here, uh, really pay close attention we are going to be doing a marathon of news broadcast over the Thanksgiving holiday here on Saturday. Uh, we'll be having Brother Gary Lowry from California on our broadcast as well. Um, I, I, I contacted him because of the vision that he's seen back in 2013 uh, of an F-16 that would end up going down in the mountains of Syria that would actually catapult the war, the war that is going to happen in the Middle East. He said this will be what the Lord had showed him. Uh, I have remembered it. Uh, in fact, his particular dream was brought to the Israeli government authority. We had kind of helped bring that uh, to their attention. They took a great interest in his dream. And it was uh, concluded then by the Israeli government that that F-16 would actually belong to the Turkish government. They did not believe it would be a Syrian F-16 that would cause the war, but they do believe that it would be an F-16 from Turkey. So. We think it's very interesting, and I'd like for Brother Gary to share with you guys here about that dream. Uh, I'm not big on dreams and visions, I will say that. It's not that I don't believe that God doesn't use them, but I see so many people that purport their dreams and visions, and they don't come to pass. Uh, and, and that's why I'm a little cautious, I, I should say. I, I certainly know that God gives dreams and visions, and many of them do come to pass that people have, but I'm cautious about what I do share publicly because of the, so many of those that don't happen and it just lets a lot of people down so anyway turkey's attack on the russian uh, warplanes proves turkey is backing terrorist uh the terrorist uh, syrian military uh states here and this is um uh they state here in the article here again another one from tass there we were really looking at different news uh broadcast 
both from the Russian side as well as the Arabic news in that area. Uh, we do because in our family we speak uh, a combine of seven languages in our family here. So we're able to monitor in many different uh, languages here, including the Russian language. My wife is fluent in Russian. My father-in-law also speaks Russian um, because of being under the communistic regime uh, during their time. My father-in-law also is an expert in Russian uh, military jets. Uh, so we have some interesting uh, backing on our side to understand things that are going on here uh, so that we get a better idea uh, so that we can share that information with you guys as well. Um, also, too, let me just bring another thing to your attention. Uh, some of you may be following what's going on in Crimea and Ukraine as well. There again, it's another issue why I think that war is pretty much on the horizon very soon. Uh, because we see that uh, the Ukrainians have been provoking the Russians as well, cutting the power supply to Crimea. Now, I do believe that this is all orchestrated. It's kind of funny that the Crimean crisis happens just before the downing of the bomber, uh, of the Russian bomber. And I want you guys to kind of think about this a little bit. Um, how would that play into the hands? How can we see that this is actually an orchestrated plan on NATO's part against Russia? NATO has a big problem with Russia being in Syria. I can tell you right now because there's a huge oil natural gas reserves all over this area, including off of the coast of Egypt, Syria, Israel, etc. And they didn't want Russia stepping in. Now, the Ukrainian conflict has been going on for quite some time. But suddenly, when it seemed that things were starting to settle down in Ukraine, as far as with the, uh, the Donsk region and Luhansk region there in the east, and some of the uh, ceasefires had been holding a little bit better, then suddenly we see the Ukraine's government bombed several of the, um, uh, the energy supply lines and things going into Crimea and shutting down the, the, the supply line of, of power to Crimea. Uh, and then it was right after this, just a day or so after, then we see the downing of the Russian uh, Su-24 uh, bomber also in this area. Now, I think that they're linked together. And the reason I say that is because why? Russia has its naval fleet. One of its naval fleets is stationed in Crimea. So the thing is, is to cause a problem in Crimea because it's also a launching pad for Russia to get its naval uh, ships in order there in the Mediterranean Sea. That's another interesting thing too I'd like to speak with Brother Gary about in, in, in another dream and vision that he had seen because the very cruise missile ship that is in the uh, Mediterranean now that was sent there was one that he called by name uh, in his own vision. Now let me just clarify a little bit with you guys one of the reasons why I'm very interested in Brother Gary coming on with us here uh, and I and I don't I cannot endorse everything that Brother Gary's ever done or, or or said as far as dreams and visions. I do love him; he's a very dear brother. But I've not looked at everything that he's had said and done. So, you know, I know Brother Gary's spoken about many things. So I, I cannot say about other things there. But I do know for a fact that in this dream regarding the F-16 and this one about the um, the particular uh, the name of the ship there that Russia would send into the Mediterranean. Brother Gary mentioned a name of an individual in this dream that he had no way of knowing who the person was that was in the Israeli government. Uh, it was very interesting. It was not someone that would be public. You couldn't find them publicly, but that's one of the reasons why it gave me a lot more interest. It's what also gave Israel the interest in seeing that this man knew someone that he shouldn't have been able to know about. Uh, so it's going to be an exciting time on Saturday. Uh, we'll be running this on live stream, no doubt, as well. So uh, we're trying to also repair that, uh, that means of, of doing that uh, live streaming for you guys. I think I've got some of the issues resolved on that, so you'll get a clearer picture that want to listen on live stream. It'd be Stephen Denoon. Uh, just look up live stream there. We'll also post uh, that for you. It'll be at... Um, I think that's going to be, as far as Gary's time, I think it's 1 p.m. Pacific time, uh, which I want to say that's around 3 p.m. Eastern time. We'll, we'll get it all figured out and get it posted there on live stream for you, It'll as well as air here on YouTube as well. Uh, but anyway, Russia, though, is saying that clearly that these are not uh, just... Um, 
fly by night forces there. Uh, the general command of the, of the Syrian army stresses that the desperate acts of the aggression will only increase our determination to continue the war against the terrorist uh, organizations with the support and help of Syrians friends, mainly Russia. Uh, Sana said a Russian Su-24 frontline bomber was down by an Air Force missile launched from the Turkish F-16 fighter jet when it was returning from an anti-terrorist mission in the uh, Him Yamin air base in Syria. The warplane was at an altitude of 6,000 meters at a distance one kilometer from the Turkish border. The defense ministry said earlier that pilots had managed to eject from the aircraft uh, their whereabouts were being uh, established on the mission of the bomb Islamic State targets. It was a stab in the back, Putin said. The Russian president warned that the attack on Russian warplane would have serious consequences for the Russian-Turkish relationship. Um, one thing I'd like to mention too, you know, because I've watched the video footage of the downing of the plane there, and I can't say, I mean, I realize you're looking at a plane that is traveling at about 1,200 kilometers an hour, uh, at top speed. Now, I don't know what he's traveling at once he's hit, but the plane did crash on the Syrian side, and he doesn't go very far at all before the plane does a just a nosedive into the mountain. Uh, so, for, for, for the Turkish to say that he's in Turkish airspace, and yet the plane crashes about six kilometers on the inside of the border of, uh, of Syria, that really kind of makes you wonder just who's telling the truth in this. Uh, and, and, and I can't say that Russia is telling the truth or the United States or Turkey for that matter. I know that a lot of things have been fabricated in the past, just like the downing of the German Wings airline. That was a clear fabrication. They wanted to blame this on this pilot. Uh, there's been some sufficient proof uh, that the that the that Boeing could easily take control of that plane even if it had been hijacked could have landed it at many of the air bases around the world another story altogether but the the thing is is they can certainly manipulate these audio uh, recordings if they so desire to do so uh, but there again I can't say that Russia didn't go into the airspace we know that's happened before Russia pledged that they would not do it but you still got to remember, if Russia has been trying to work with NATO and dealing with ISIS, why do they consider Russia a threat at this point anyway? Uh, it's a lot, of, a lot of very interesting things are going on, and I, I personally believe that the U.S. is pushing for a war. Uh, they may not want to fight that war directly, but the U.S. wants a war. Uh, we're going to go into all this tomorrow. Uh, the Hebrew Nation also will be back here on YouTube again as well. And uh, be a lot of interesting things, uh, needless to say, that we'll be sharing with you guys. Can't say exactly what the news will be on tomorrow evening, but I've been doing a lot of research on this fuel, the biblical aspect of it, Hosea's prophecy, uh, as well as many other prophecies there that are dealing with the things that are happening in Syria. I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live, YouTube segment here. God bless you. Shalom and good evening.